3D Wedding Bride and Groom Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a 3D wedding nail art design. So the first nail is going to be a wedding cake with little flowers coming down it, and the second one is going to be a silhouette of a bride and groom. And this whole design is in tones of like raspberries and pinks. If you are doing a wedding that's, I know my sister's was purple with calla lilies, you could definitely tweak it a little bit to make it personal for that specific event. And also this isn't your classic white French tip wedding design, it's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more out there and possibly strange for a wedding. It's not your classic. So I hope you like that if you are like me and like to be a little more outside the box. And the other thing I want to mention quick is that the winner for the Helichrysum oil that I gave away from a week ago, that giveaway is now closed and the winner is Kathy Barnes. So if you could please contact me within about 72 hours, that would be fantastic and I can get that mailed out to you and I hope that it helps. And so that's that. And so please click subscribe to see any future videos or giveaways as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is the bride and groom nail and so I started with making the nail bed with a cover pink and I'm going to also form the smile line at this point as well and for the smile line I want to make sure that it comes to a, a like a subtle point not like a sharp point just sort of tapers into that shape and then to fill in the tip I use this gorgeous glittery raspberry type color that I have or like a rhubarb color. This glitter is one of my absolute favorites and I don't have many opportunities to use it and so that's why I used it for this design because I knew that I just wanted to use it so that's where I came up with the color scheme. And so then I'm going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic and making sure that I definitely encapsulate over the smile line and also over the that glitter just to make sure that it's nice and protected but also just over the entire nail to give it some strength but I want to focus it over the tip area and also make sure that you form your apex to make sure that's the right shape as well and then I'm going to be filing it first with a 180 grit file to remove any bulk and make sure that it's a nice good narrow elegant shape and then I'll go through after that's as it is and buff it with a 240 grit padded buffer to smooth out any scratches. So now with the color of paint that's about the same and so it's like a rhubarb type color, I'm going to be painting my bride and groom silhouette. And I started with the groom's head and I'm going to be honest here and say that this part did actually take me two tries. The first time, I don't know what happened. It was like every line I painted went crooked. I, I don't know. I think that was more of a me error just in general than this design is difficult. I don't know. Brain fart. It was my hand and my brain weren't communicating properly. And so I just, I filed that off and I did it again. So I first did the, or the groom's head and then the bride's, the bride's head. And then I went through and I painted their bodies just like that. And I'm doing this off of a photo that I found on the internet just so that I had the silhouette the way I liked it. Now, like I said, with the things that you could tweak, if your bride, if you know she's going to have her hair in a different way, or if it's you and you're going to have your hair a specific way, you could definitely paint the silhouette to match that. Same thing with the dress. There's not too much of the dress that you really can tell, but a little bit. I mean, you can tell style-wise that this is a pretty sleek design, but you know, little things like that can always be added or changed, as well as, like I said, with the color. That's another big thing. And then I'm going to add just a little couple swirls coming off of her hair for the veil. Just like that, just little lines, more to infer a veil than to actually paint one. So then I'm gonna add a layer of gel sealer over the top of that and cure. So now for the overlay behind the cake, I'm going to start with that same gorgeous glitter color that is, it's kind of, I don't even know how to explain all the different dimensions in this glitter that you can't see in the video. There's some silver glitter, there's some holographic glitter, there's dark reds and pinks and rhubarb color. I mean, it's, it's so deep looking that I don't, it's just one of my favorites, so I definitely want to make sure I used it. And then I'm going to go through and encapsulate that nail with another layer of that clear acrylic once again to protect that glitter and also to give this nail some strength just as I did with the other one. So once that's on there, make sure that the whole thing is nice and smooth and is perfect. I was so close to getting that done in one bead. I always find it, it's kind of like when you are dealing cards and you deal it so that you deal out exactly, or you pick up the exact number of cards you're dealing out. That always brings me so much joy. It's kind of like that with the acrylic. If you can get it so it's exactly one bead, no extra, you don't need any extra and you don't have any extra, that just, it just makes me happy. So then I'm going to be now sculpting, it's all filed and buffed and all that jazz, and I'm going to be making my wedding cake. So I started with the bottom tier, which is going to be nice. All of these, I didn't make them super square. I made them a little bit more of a trapezoid. I thought 
like I said, staying in tune with that modern theme. I like I like trapezoids. I use trapezoids in a lot of my various arts. I don't know. They're kind of square, but yet they're not. Obviously, I mean, you know. So first tier, and then I'm going to start working on the second tier. Same shape, just slightly smaller. And also when you're doing this, make sure that you leave a nice line between each tier so that you can easily see them. I don't know if you can tell there's that little indent there that I keep touching up with my brush. You want to leave that. And then I'm going to be doing the last tier, the smallest one on top. Now, to personalize this nail, you can obviously say you're doing a five-tier cake. If the wedding has a five-tier cake, make this nail have five tiers. If it's, I mean, there's so many different choices when you're doing the cakes. And for the decorations, you can switch up the, decoration, the decorations to match as well. And I know for this one, I just started and I made really, really easy little flowers by putting down a bead and then making a hole in the center of it with my brush. Now these aren't, obviously they're not detailed flowers, they're simple, easy to recognize flowers. And I just kind of swooped them back and forth across the cake. If you know what the cake is going to be decorated like, you can definitely change that. Like for my sister's wedding cake, I did her wedding cake as well. Um, but it was a lavender, it wasn't a traditional white, and then it had calla lilies cascading down it. And you could do that on the cake instead to personalize it. And I know hers had calla lilies covering the top of it in like a bouquet that were made out of fondant and gum paste. And so instead, like on this one, I just put a little bow on top of it, which I'll be making in a moment. Right here, I'll be making the bow. So you can just, you know, make sure that it's personalized to that thing, to that event. So then to make the bow, I just put down a little bead of that rhubarb color acrylic, and I'm going to be flattening it out into a long, nice rectangle pretty thin, really very quite small. The bow that I'm making is fitting on top of the cake, so I have to make sure that it's teeny tiny. So then I'm going to fold in one side to the center and then press it down, fold in the other side to the center. And I waited just slightly too long, so the acrylic was a little bit more on the set side, so they didn't want to stick. That's why I used my little brush end that's got the chisel to really get it. And then I also used my fingernail just to make sure that it stayed. And so then I'm going to be attaching that to the top of the wedding cake and adding some little, I took some gel sealer and I mixed in some glitter. And then I'm going to go through and I added that to the center of the bow as well as to the center of each of those flowers. Just a little glitter to glitz it up. This is a glitter that is fairly sim similar to the glitter in the background of the cake. And then I also went through and I outlined each tier. So just the bottom of each tier with some of that glitter, just as like a little border on cakes. I know if you decorate cakes, for me the hardest part is always getting the bottom of the fondant to look clean. So I always put a little border around each tier just to make sure it looks nice and finished. And then I applied a layer of gel sealer over the background and cured that again and also a little bit over the flowers and over the bow. And that is it. So I hope you like this design. Like I said, totally customizable and you can just switch it up to match what you're doing, which is kind of fun. I don't know. I like that sort of thing. So I hope you like it as well. And don't forget to share recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. I'd love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.